Hello, Etienne. Hello. <laughs> how are you? How are you yes. doing? Um, so I guess we're going to do a sort of quick change. Um, we'll start up in about two minutes. Um, okay. So if you want to um, uh, uh, share your screen, I can get that up there. And uh, yeah, I can do it. Share screen. Uh, yeah, share screen. Screen one. Okay. Is it all right like this? If Perfect. Very nice. I didn't re realize Rene Luke was your colleague when I was introducing him this morning. Exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I figured it out because I saw your, your comments with the slides and stuff. I was like, oh, right. Yeah, this, yeah that's why I'm an and just share the slides. And uh, that's team, uh, yeah, helping each other. But at that time, they are all at dinner time. So <laughs> no colleagues are there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we'll wait uh, another just about a minute. And then uh, we'll, sure. I'll introduce you, and we will let you go nuts. OK. So we are off stage now. Uh, oh, no. Everyone's hearing us. <laughs> okay, okay, that's great. That's okay. <laughs> um, they they can't participate, but they can be uh, hearing hearing what it's like to be backstage, I guess. Okay. Um, so with that, um, good afternoon in North American LATAM. Uh, good evening in Europe, and uh, good morning or really crazy late at night um, in Asia and Australia, New Zealand. Um, welcome to the SALTA room. This is the second of the six presentations this afternoon. And I'd like to introduce Etienne Tremaya, um, who is working at 3Liz, which is an open source company located in France. He's a QGIS core contributor and also an active OSM contributor. And he thinks about this often as he's hiking through the mountains in France. Um, and in fact, that's why he's going to present to us uh, OpenStreetMap because it's his passion and his work and it uh, helps him get around. So with that, um, I'll step off stage and you have the next 20 minutes or so, and then we'll field questions at the end. Okay, thanks for the introduction. Uh, welcome everyone. I'm going to speak about how to use OSM data in QGIS because there are many ways like vector, raster, database, etc. So we are going to check uh, all of these. So I'm working for free, as he said, like it's a French company. Uh, we are doing open source um, and we are core contributors in QGIS on the server side mainly. So we are doing mainly like a QGIS desktop server, PostGIS, and also we have our own uh, open source solution publishing QGIS project on the web called Lismap. Uh, basically, I'm not going to introduce QGIS. I guess most of you uh, <laughs> know this uh, powerful desktop application. Just before from Martin about polycludes in QGIS. Uh, on the other side, we have OpenStreetMap. Uh, it's a vector database um, with an open database license. So it's uh, worldwide coverage. So everyone can contribute to add data in this database. Uh, it's very vague. Like you can have all kinds of features from land use, opening hours, access accessibility, shops, uh, a lot of things <laughs> goes into OpenStreetMap. Um, the OSM data model is quite different from the GIS data model. Like in GIS, we have points, lines, and polygons. But in OSM, we have nodes, way, and relation. And an OSM way can either be a GIS line or a GIS polygon according to its OSM tags, like its description. Um, an OSM relation can be point, line, multi-line string, multi-polygons, mixed geometry when it's in the GIS software. As we can see on the right, like um, relation can include other relation, a relation can include nodes or ways. So it's it's quite different from GIS data. And another difference, it's attributes. Uh, in GIS, 
the, there is the concept of a player which has one or many fields defining all features in this specific layer. But in OSM, like the layer doesn't exist. Like each feature is individual and has its own field. So you can have uh, one bakery uh, with just bakery uh, as a description and 200 meters from this bakery, you can have another bakery with like telephone number, contacts, opening hours, uh, accessibility, if they have pastry or not. There's a lot of keys that exist in OpenStreetMap. Um, so therefore, like OSM data in QGIS is, is always a little bit different from raw OSM data. And moreover, there are a few questions that we can wonder. Like, do you need to have up-to-date OSM data? Uh, because there is edits in the OSM database like every second. So do you need like very fresh up-to-date data or can you, can you, uh, can you live with uh, just a, a old uh, month uh, data from OSM? Are you working in a small extent or big extent? Like exactly what, what is big, small, like for online API, sometimes you can download the whole country. And sometimes if you are in a big country like the US, you can't download the whole country. So there is a few things to take care. Uh, also, yeah, uh, the density of data are, is very different uh, in the world. Um, do you need OSM metadata such as uh, who contributed in this area, the change set, the timestamp of each object? Like, do you need to have like uh, this kind of information to know if the data is up to date or not? Um, do you need data designed for display, analysis, routing, or geocoding? Do you need all OSM keys and values that's linked to the data model that I explained just before? Like, uh, it's, it, it can skip a lot of keys uh, sometimes. So there isn't a single answer, but let's see what is possible. So first with QGIS only uh, in the browser, you, there is by default now like the XYZ tiles provider. So there is OpenStreetMap by default. Uh, it's called the MapNIC style and it's loaded as a raster in the QGIS browser. That's very convenient to quickly add uh, a base map in your QGIS. Uh, you can also find some online tools which are converting the data like from uh, OSM to a more GIS format such as uh, shapefile, geopackage. So we can say about like download.geofabric.de. Uh, there is one that I like, uh, data.datawax.com, uh, but it's mainly France and other countries in the world, but not everywhere. And there is a QG style coming with it. It's the style on the right. so it's. Very nice because you have uh, styles for all layers provided. It's like it's it's nice uh, and convenient. Um, in QGIS, also by default, you can load OSM XML files or PDF files. Uh, it's showing you uh, different geometries available. Um, that's thanks to OGR in the background. And you can also, like, there is different websites. So again, download.showfabric.de where you can download like raw OSM XML files and PBF files. There are other websites that you can find on the internet like this one as well. Um, but it starts to be an issue because uh, when you open a raw OSM file, you may have a column called all the tags uh, in your attribute table. And it's sometimes like it's not convenient because you are looking for some specific OSM keys. Uh, but in QGIS, as there is this concept of layer with defined fields, um, it, it has been made like this, that a lot of keys goes in this other tags. And you need, um, it's called an HTOR field, uh, like it's a key value pair in a single field. But obviously, since QGIS 3.6, so it's quite old now, you can have um, a processing algorithm called explode HTOR field. So it will take your vector layer, you define which field you want to explode, and it will read first uh, all the layer, all, all the features inside, and check all the available keys in this data set. And then it will create a, a field um, for the layer, like for each keys found in this layer. You can also use QGIS expression. Um, if you write HTOR in the search field, you can find HTOR to map. So you can use it for selection or labeling. If you don't want to create a layer, 
intermediate layer, you can quickly say like, okay, I store to map from other tags. Then you choose the key that you want, like description in this example. So you can extract uh, temporary, like uh, some keys and value uh, from this HTOR field. Uh, but there, is, there are a lot of plugins available in QGIS. Like I've checked, it's nearly 1,000 plugins uh, in this version of QGIS, the latest one. Uh, so let's check what we can find. Um, there is Quick Map Services, which is quite convenient. Um, like for instance, this is like open topo map uh, in the background. It's nice for hiking. Um, so do not forget to go in the settings of this plugin and then more services, then you can click on the get contributed pack. It enables you a lot of base maps like this one, uh, this stamen watercolor uh, base map. And there are plenty if you look in this menu, uh, the list is very long. A uh, quick OSM plugin. So uh, this one is to download data on the fly. So in the background, it's making requests to the Overpass API. It's very quite similar to Overpass Turbo, which is like um, the web application equivalent. So it's using um, raw OSM data and the, the language is called OQL, Overpass Query Language. Uh, maybe you have noticed, but like two weeks ago, we have released Quick OSM 2.0. And we are targeting both like non-OSM contributors and also like OSM overpass API experts who can write very complex queries. Um, Quick OSM is doing some magic for you. It's removing the HTOR field uh, by default. You won't see the other tags. It's doing the explode HTOR uh, in the background. There's, but QuickOSM is using an API, so it's limited in the amount of data that you can download. Sometimes it works, sometimes you will get an error from the server saying, sorry, that's too much. Um, so let's make a quick overview of this new version. Um, something nice is that you can search now in your native language. Uh, for instance, in English, it's bakery. In German, it's bakery. Sorry, I don't speak German. I hope it's more or less correct. In French, it's boulangerie. <laughs> and in OSM, this is like defined as shop equal bakery. So quick OSM will know like you can write boulangerie in French and it will automatically um, write for you shop equal bakery. You don't need to remember if it's amenity equal bakery or shop equal bakery or craft or whatever, uh, it will do it for you. And we added also support for multi key and value with and and or operator. Um, so as in this example, we are doing like a shop uh, equal bakery or shop uh, equal cheese. Yeah, I'm French, I love uh, French baguette and French cheese. So we can combine now multiple queries, I mean, multiple conditions into a single query. And we, we don't need to know exactly like uh, the specific key and value. So it's it's better for people who are not very comfortable with OpenStreetMap data and uh, who doesn't know exactly like the key and the value. Uh, that's another feature in this new version. It's map presets. Um, it's uh, like to download many layers, many OSM objects with QGIS symbology at the same time, like just you choose a map preset then you just say, okay, I want in this map preset in this extent, and it will download for you. Uh, and so in this example, in the urban one, you can download like roads and buildings at the same times. Um, everything is set up in the query already. So it's the idea is to have a map out of the box, like it's ready to use. You, you want a base map, a vector base map in your QGIS. You go in the default presets, you choose urban, and then you will have already some labels, uh, roads uh, with a style and buildings. So for map presets, we need you because we would like to add more presets. Like we can have a bicycle map presets uh, about like uh, bicycle, bicycle tracks, bicycle parking, um, tracks in the forest. Uh, showing bicycle shops, so it's like a map a theme, uh, a map preset, like showing all features related to a special uh, kind of feature. Uh, you could have like land use. So 
We hope we will get some contribution on this part in QuickOSM. Uh, for advanced users, you have QuickOSM in processing. So it's available in the processing toolbox or in the modeler. So in this example, um, downloading fire hydrants, reprojecting in meters, projection uh, in, yeah, in meters, sorry, and buffering. Um, so basically, you just give the extent and all your processing model is set up to download fire hydrants, to do the buffering, and to apply the QG style. So you can make some advanced workload because then you can combine with other QGIS algorithms. Um, we also improved the local OSM file. So this one, if you have downloaded the previous PDF file or XML file, you can use it in quick OSM and then you can choose, okay, I want to display only bakery. So it will apply uh, the layer um, filtering uh, on the provider side about like, okay, I want only shop equals bakery in, um, in this file. Um, some quick tips about uh, in quick OSM. Um, if you right click on a layer, you can uh, reload the query. Uh, if you want to update uh, your data set. Um, if you want to query many cities at the same time, you can uh, use semicolon like Montpellier, semicolon Paris. You see it's downloading amenity restaurants in Montpellier and Paris at the same time. Uh, you have different actions which are available. So you can either from the attribute table or from the map canvas, you can click on a feature and then you can either visit the website if the URL is provided, it, a mapillary, or you can press JOSOM, it will open uh, JavaScript, uh, JavaScript, uh, Java <laughs> OpenScript Map Editor. So yeah, you can see the full change log of QuickOSM 2.0. Uh, on GitHub, uh, there is a lot of things like history of queries. Um, yeah, you can fetch metadata now, etc. Uh, geocoding that's new in QGIS 3.20. Uh, there is a new server which has been set up. It's nominateam.qgis.org. Um, so there is no processing algorithm to do batch nominateam uh, geocoder. So if you have a point layer and you want to do to know like uh, the position according uh, from an address, an address field, you can do it as well from the locator bar. So that's uh, also included uh, in QGIS. No more plugin re required now. Uh, so you can start using the locator bar. It will ask nominateam and it will uh, zoom uh, on the address. Routing, there is also a plugin for that that you can use. It's RS Tools. It's ask, uh, there is an API uh, with OpenStreetMap data. Uh, it's open route services, so you can do isochrons or matrix calculations. Um, why not importing OpenStreetMap data in a database? So if you go on this wiki page, in, you can find a lot of schema, like techniques to import OSM data. Um, you can find OSM2 PGSQL, which is like the most famous one. It's very old and very used. Uh, import OSM version three is nice because it's updatable now. And there is some like different layers uh, provided by default. So I made a, um, a Docker example. So PostgreSQL with Docker, uh, it's this project on GitHub. Uh, so it's a, basically it's a Docker Compose project. I can't explain what is Docker in this presentation, but basically there is a PostgreSQL container, an InpoSM container, an OSM update container to download OSM diff files. Um, so the workflow is quite easy because you drop a PDF file in a folder, you drop the area of interest for clipping, like a, a, a polygon. You copy just the basic settings provided by the, the project and you right make a run to launch the docker compose project and that's it you have all your data imported in postgresql with different layers as you can see like admins iras amenities buildings etc um, and it's updated every two minutes by default um, you can change that of course but you are sure that you have very fresh osm data uh, with these two minutes um, so it's all set up in this Docker Compose project. You have nothing else to, 
to set up. And you can customize it with SQL triggers or views if you want like some post-processing, uh, if you want to create some custom views, et cetera. Uh, vector tiles, uh, I'm going to let um, Adam, I think is the next one, is going to talk about vector tiles. So I think he might talk about <laughs> map tiler and open, open map tiles. Oh, I hope so, I will see. So that's another way to use OSM uh, in QGIS with vector tiles. So yeah, that's it. That's just a subset but <laughs> in, uh, in 15 minutes. <laughs> Super job, um, very comprehensive and, and, and an important topic. It's OSM is such a great resource, but like you say, it's in its own kind of private garden, but you can take things out, but it, um, there yes, are a lot yes, of- Yes, yes, true. Yeah, there is a lot of tools uh, existing now. Uh, <laughs> but uh, as I try to say, it depends on the extent, it depends on if you need like up-to-date data, if you want to update it in a week or in a month, you won't have the same workflow. Uh, the amount of data is quite different. Uh, <laughs> some people, we just need a base map. It's OK. Uh, so <laughs> so um, we have one question so far in the, in the, um, in the uh, public application. Um, yeah. It's a good, good question. Um, how can we contribute to the map presets? Is there a link to a resource or something? Um, so this has been released like what two weeks ago, I think. Uh, so I think it has been explained a little bit in the documentation. Um, in the plugin, I think there is a help button to go to docs.freelease.org slash quickosm. Uh, but I will check, I will double check, and I hope. Uh, <laughs> I will write uh, like uh, write some more because it's it's a very nice uh, feature uh, to have a map out of the box without any open strip map skills, uh, and you want uh, vector data in QGIS, yeah. everything included. Uh, so it must be a little bit explained in the documentation, but it was on my roadmap like since we released 2.0. I was busy fixing like the last few bugs, etc. So <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> Super. Um, I don't see any more questions. We'll we'll wait uh, one more minute just in case one pops up. Um, but um, otherwise, that was uh, really interesting, really well presented, great slides. So um, thank you, thank you so much. Sure, it was a pleasure. <laughs> and I saw lots of uh, applauses and things going up, uh, interaction from the audience while you were speaking. So okay, lots of people seem interested. But if people want to contribute on other things in Quick OSM, they are more than welcome. There are a lot of translations as well uh, available uh, <laughs> on Transifex. Very much. Okay, so with that, um, we'll go into our break while people change rooms. I'll bring Adam forward. I'm going to bring, um, uh, for Adam's benefit, I'm going to bring Kodrina. Um, in as well as she's going to be taking over for the the second half of this session uh, and the last three speakers. So, thanks thanks again, Etienne. Um, I hope to see you next year in Italy. Okay, yeah, of course. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> see you. Very good. Hey, Adam, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Cool. Yeah, if, if you want, you can um, have your camera on and um, and then share your screen into another window so you, so you can have both. Um, I, I, uh, I had a little bit of confusion in my role as moderator. Um, you know, I was very proactive in reaching out to uh, the first three people who were speaking. Um, I did not realize I had um, three more people until this morning. Um, Kodrina was my backup. Um, and I got to know Kodrina through the um, Bucharest conference, and uh, 
she is um, since I have a meeting with my boss in one hour, she's going to uh, take the second half. So um, I'll sort of introduce you and walk you through the questions. And then as we wind down the questions, um, Kodrina will, will take over and uh, communicate with uh, the next speaker, who is, um, I think, uh, Benoit Blanc. And um, so that that's just the only thing we haven't talked about before. Uh, but it it's it's gone well. Uh, the technology is hung in there, and.